Morning boys and girls, welcome back to the big board and to the play by poll action uh, for CV. I'm going to apologize in advance for any noise you'll hear, but uh, we've got a little bit of construction going on at the house at the moment, so it may get kind of rowdy. Uh, <clears throat> so where are we at? We've had the first poll uh, which has elected where the aircraft will, uh, when the aircraft will take off and uh, how many aircraft will take off and so they can go and execute a search pattern. And now we've got the uh, second uh, poll up, which should be finished sometime this afternoon, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it'll be Friday, the 3rd of May. And at the moment, the polls are indicating that uh, Task Force 2 will head to this location and Task Force uh, 1 will head to this location. And I've marked here uh, where they'll be at 0600 because I wanted to get the aircraft up in the air and start moving the Japanese fleets on that come on. And as a reminder, uh, uh, the turns of arrival will stay the same, but the locations can be anywhere on the, the far side of the map. And I'll show you that in just a second. And so what we've done is I've, I've played, uh, in parentheses, played you to here to the 0600 turn and we have moved uh, the weather has changed uh, we've had directional changes in the wind and we've also had cloud you know, we've had cloud movement we do cloud movement every uh, even base turn and every uh, there's a star on the map on the on the turn record for when we change the wind or roll for the wind change and uh, the winds have changed a little bit which will uh, impact uh, search patterns and things like that so over here we can see the, the full extent of the uh, Catalina's search. And obviously I haven't found anything yet. It's only been uh, two hours of daylight in any case. And we know that the Japanese are coming on anywhere from here around this corner of the map down to the bottom of the map. And that uh, the first forces arrive at 0400, which, was, which would be from where these guys are uh, just... Uh, well, one, two, three, four, five, six turns ago. And uh, that also tells us that there was one other group coming in following it at 0500. And then there are additional forces, if you recall from the other briefings, that come, uh, come in at 1500 on this day, June the 3rd, which is another good 10 or 12 turns away. So uh, that, that's kind of the status. It's where the aircraft are as of 0600, and this is the wind pattern. Uh, you'll see that those are gonna end up merging. Uh, we've got wind blowing this way and wind blowing this way. And we also have a sec another section of wind over here, that uh, wind pattern that's forcing a uh, cloud this way, which will hopefully be good for the, uh, the Japanese plan, and not so good for you guys. So, uh, turn uh, two onwards, the Japanese player could have brought on, um, flying in from Wake Island, the, uh, these guys here, they're Nels and a Betty. And then there's a Mavis aircraft, which have a pretty good range, 23 endurance and eight movement points a turn. So they're, they're gonna come on uh, very shortly, uh, next turn, 0700. And uh, they will be searching for your carriers. And I have already predetermined a search pattern and uh, uh, before I chose, before you guys chose your uh, your movement patterns. So I'm trying to keep my uh, my decisions independent of yours, uh, so that uh, it remains so uh, you know fair and reasonable. And clearly the uh, the Mavises would in any case want to run a search pattern that kind of that kind of went this way. You know, that went uh, before uh, midway, not behind it, but before midway looking for uh, carriers and destroyers and submarines and things like that. Well, that's a good point though, that we're not using submarines in this campaign. I just couldn't come up with a convenient and easy way to manage the uh, Japanese subs and the US subs and keep, it, uh, keep the overhead down for you guys in terms of decision points to make as to what to do with them, particularly given they move one hex a turn.
All right, so that's it. So that's a little Intel brief and uh, where things uh, are. As of Friday uh, in the morning, uh, or lunchtime thereabouts, uh, once we confirm that these are indeed the two locations, I'll pop these uh, forces up to here, and then we'll run forward three or four more turns, and I will have to uh, uh, track the movement of the Japanese fleet. I'll put them on the board, and just to make sure that your guys do not uh, miss them. And keep in mind that with this search pattern here, I'm always going to keep uh, this edge plane uh, within the maximum range available so that it will find anything on an edge, so we won't miss anything. And then and we'll keep this consistent two hex uh, separation all the way along for their pattern. And they'll, they'll move probably to the edge of the map and then turn almost directly around and come back. That leaves a gap on the southern half of the map, right? And you've got two uh, Catalinas here that are coming to compensate. And I'll uh, pop a video up or, or uh, just ask some general questions about how you want to handle the, the timing gap and what you want to do with the, um, you know, you know forces are coming on at 0400, 0500, somewhere along there and your forces have already kind of reached the edge of the map. They've got another three or four turns they can hang around. Where are they going to, we're gonna kind of do some circling patterns, I guess, to try and see if we can get lucky and find the Japanese fleet. But, but in the meantime, you have to, uh, you're gonna to have to send some guys back to refuel uh, and maybe launch some other aircraft to uh, pick up the search pattern and try and find the guys, find the Japanese. All right, later.